Welcome to Build Your Thing, the podcast where we help content creators find their unique creative voice, monetize their work, and build their tribe of loyal fans. I'm your host, Matt Jarrow, and what would you say if you could reach 1 million readers online with your content? Well, this is exactly what my guest today has achieved. My guest today is Antonello Zanini. He is a freelance software engineer and technical writer And with his technical content, he has managed to reach more than 1 million people online. And today, he's going to share some of the tactics he used to achieve that. With that being said, Antonello, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's it's a pleasure to have you here. And um, excuse me, like if I misspelled your misspelled your name at the beginning. Uh, no, so don't worry, don't uh, worry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Antonello, like first of all, where are you from? I'm from Italy, northern Italy. So that's also why my name is so like <laughs> uncommon. <laughs> yes, th th that's great. So uh, the interesting thing is that uh, you've actually reached, um, as I said in, in, in the introduction, uh, one million readers on, on, on Medium as, a, as actually a non-native speaker. So first of all, congrats on that. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> And uh, yeah, would you like us to, to tell us a little bit more about what you're actually doing and well, Maybe then on uh, the second part, we could dig a little bit deeper into the tactics you've used to actually achieve this huge milestone. Okay. Uh, as you said, I'm a freelance software engineer and technical writer. I have been writing technical content online since 2020, and I wrote more than 150 technical articles. Thanks to them, I was able to reach more than 1 million people. So... Uh, as you can imagine, I'm pretty pretty happy about that. <laughs> yes. That's a, a great milestone. Uh, and I write mainly in English, but sometimes I write technical content also in Italian and Spanish. But um, yeah, le let's say that 95% of my content is is in English. Awesome, awesome. So, um, what is actually your background? So, like, did you like learn how to like? All the technical stuff by, by yourself or like what is actually your what happened actually before 2020 just to put things a little bit into perspective in 2018 i graduated in uh, computer science i was mm -hmm. a top 20 student in italy and and i was looking for a job because of course and, and i mean i started to to have interviews and i realized that the <laughs> The job market in Italy is not that good. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and I mean, and, and I wanted to capitalize on the fact that I was a top 20 student. And so I started to, to learn English because of that. So because I wanted to find a, a better job abroad. And that's why also I started to, to write in English. But yeah, I mean, uh, when it comes to, to being a software engineer, I studied for, for that, but when it comes to being a technical writer, I'm a self-taught technical writer. I didn't have like courses or, or anything like that. I just started to, to write and learn by, by myself. That's awesome. That's awesome. First, congrats. Like you've been one of the top, uh, as, as you mentioned, like one of the, one of the best students, like in, in, in yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So like, um, Okay, so you graduated and then what actually made you um, start writing online? How did you actually approach that um, before maybe digging deeper into, you know, the fact that, well, how, how do you as uh, English not being your primary language, um, like I'm sure like you had some mental barriers that you had to overcome. So yeah, maybe we yeah. can talk a little bit more about that too. Actually, it's a bit of a funny story because I was learning English and I was using italki. I don't know if you know italki. It's an app to, to learn languages. Mm -hmm. And its killer feature is that you can write a, a small text and people like native, uh, native speakers can correct them, can correct it. And it's, it's very useful because you can learn how to write in your target language. And I was writing in English every day It was like very important for me. Then in 2020, I don't remember why, but uh, I had been studying the language for two years, more or less mm -hmm. now. And they decided to shut down the website. And I was, I was using the, the website, website version of italki. And they shut down the, the website. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe they were releasing like a new app. 
And, uh, and so I started to feel that I was missing something because, I mean, for me, it was like a chore. I had to write something in English, but then I realized that it was more than that, that I loved to write in English, that I needed to write in English. And that's why I started to, to write on Medium. And I decided to approach Medium because uh, as a English learner, I used Medium to, to improve my, my reading. So I knew Medium a lot as a, as, a, as a reader, which is a bit different. But um, yeah, I decided, yeah, it's time. I want to write something. And also uh, the, the users on italki keep, kept telling me something like, uh, yeah, you are a very good writer. You should start writing. Where's your blog? So I was motivated by them. And, and one day I decided to write my first article. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's uh, th- that's great. So um, how did you actually uh, approach, um, um, you know, publishing on Medium? Like what, what was actually your goal? What is just like um, to, you know, write for yourself and maybe trying to, to reach a little bit of an audience? Or was it actually very business driven so um, did you have let's say anything specific in mind in order to let's say build an audience maybe find clients etc at the beginning i was writing for myself because it was a need i wanted to do it but um yeah at some point i realized that i could build a business out of it because people started to to see my content to notice my content online and thanks to them uh, they started to to hire me to write for their blogs. So right now it's like, I mean, for sure I write because I like about I like writing. But um, yeah, I also have a, a business uh, approach because I want to to reach new clients or at least new potential clients with that. So it's like let's say 50 50 because sometimes i write articles that i know they are not going to to give me a client but um yeah sometimes i write to to achieve new clients for sure that's interesting so um tell us a little bit more about actually the the approach that you had on on medium when it comes to you know what kind of topics you you wrote about and how did you actually transition from you know just publishing on medium into actually being able to to get clients out of out of of this platform first uh i tried to 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 reach the largest audience possible so i started to 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 try to publish articles on large publication like better programming or like uh, git connected code burst these are like top three publication on technology and on, on programming actually. And this is very good because if you publish on this publication, you know that you're going to reach a large audience. Mm-hmm. And, and also, uh, in my description, I, all, I it's very simple, but I have a hire me call to action and it works. It's very simple, like hire me with the link to my website. And this has helped me a lot because a lot of my clients are reading our software engineers or are working on startups. And they, let's say that they read my article, they are at the end of the article and they can see like hire me. And most of them have a, a blog, a technical blog, and they need technical, uh, technical writers. So, I mean, it's very easy, but it works. And also I started to, to, to send emails and to apply to, to blogs online and like saying like, look, I published like 150 articles, have, lo- have a look at them. And this is, this is also, also useful because when you have such a large content online, it's also easier to get clients because they know that they can trust you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that. That's quite interesting, and and especially like, um, uh, like it all comes back to, um, you know, sometimes people just try to to figure things out, but on on, on the other side, like it's like, um, you are just in a market where um, there is a lot of demand, right? Yeah, 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 uh, and I mean, uh, the the most important thing in my opinion is that everyone has written something in their life because, of course. And, and everyone knows how difficult it is to write 
articles that are engaging, that convey a message in a simple way, especially when it comes to technical writing. And, and so what my clients usually, usually tell me is that, yeah, I uh, read your article. Your article is very good in my opinion. Why don't you write for us? That's very mm -hmm. simple. And I mean, it's, it's about quality content, delivering quality content with a call to action. I'm not too aggressive on marketing. I have a very simple call to action and, and it works. And also, of course, on LinkedIn, I try to promote my content. I always have, I'm always open to, to working on LinkedIn. But um, yeah, I have a very simple approach and, and it works. That's interesting. So how do you actually uh, approach... Um content creation because right now i'm on your i new i'm on your medium profile and um, i'm going to link to that in the, in, in the show notes too okay, like thanks. you have like a lot a, a lot of articles so how did you actually manage you know from you know being graduated or getting graduated from university not knowing like how to how to how to actually like speak and, and write in english to actually start publishing like so much content like what was like the what are the kind of can you walk us behind the scenes what happens in terms of learning yeah. the specific like the, the specific process yeah at the beginning i was scared about that let's be honest <laughs> i was scared about writing in english because i thought that my level wasn't enough that i wasn't able to do it so i was very scared about that and at some point when i wrote my first article it was like i decided to to delete it then i wrote a second article, let's say a second first article. And uh, that article was uh, was like very technical because I was working as, as a software engineer and I had just uh, addressed a problem which was very difficult to address. And there was no, no great content online. And I thought, yeah, I could write an article about that. I wrote an article and it was uh, the, the guys behind... Uh, the startup, which was mm -hmm. the, the biggest publication on Medium, now it's uh, started up. But um, yeah, they noticed my article and they told me, like, would you like to be a writer for us? So, I mean, I was lucky, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, this has helped me a lot. And it helped me uh, gain like confidence because I knew that if someone else noticed my article, then that article was good, then... I could start writing uh, con technical content. You don't have to be like a uh, super expert about something to write about that. You can do your research. You can like you can study before writing an article. And also, if you are a software engineer, you are dealing with problems every day. So you have a lot of ideas to to write about. That's interesting because it all go it all goes back to. Um, being a practi practitioner of the of the of let's say the the niche or or the the expertise that that you teach online uh, as a creator, so like you being in the trenches of actually creating, um, you know, like in in the programming space, obviously, like there isn't there isn't actually a day or maybe even an hour where you don't stumble across let's say an issue and then you're just yeah, googling yeah. it and. You're just like kind of documenting the process. So let's say that the next person who has, let's say, this stupid error, like or the, you know, like the, the error on the screen, like when they Google it, they, 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 they stumble across an interesting resource. And then, well, um, you just, you know, take the conversation from there. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, also, this is very important in my opinion. If you're a technical writer, you should deliver like simple content. Because, I mean, I used to be a software engineer even when my level of English was very low. And, of course, when you have a problem, you have to, to Google it in English because otherwise it's very difficult to find a solution. Mm -hmm. And I had read so many articles in my life that were so difficult, so mm -hmm. difficult to understand, so long, uh, like complex articles. So when I started writing, I decided to be... to, to to approach it like in a simple way to write very short sentences, straight to the point, easy to, to understand, easy to read. And that's also why I was able to reach such a lar large audience in my, in, my, in my opinion. Yeah. And like, how did you actually um, think about, you know, people who say, well, um, everything has already been said or 
like there is no more place let's say for for someone who's just starting out i mean this is i was thinking about that too at the beginning it was very difficult for me and i was writing uh, so so few articles because i want i always wanted to deliver new content fresh content but it's so difficult if you if you think about it, especially in the technical uh, world is very difficult but um yeah at some point i decided yeah of course this is i'm writing something that it's already been covered by someone else but at the same time uh, i can write different examples i can back uh, back that content with my experience i can write examples based on my experience i can i mean there are several different different ways to to deliver the same like topic to convey a message so i don't think that you should be scared about that Sim- you just have to to try and actually i wrote an article which is on a very popular topic and and it made 40 views in the first like three months because of that because it's a, a topic uh, covered too much mm-hmm. but um yeah it t- it took time but now it has like 50k views why because oh. it, it's a popular topic i used what were in my experience good examples so i mean you it's you you shouldn't be scared about that yeah so like even like right now i'm I'm still browsing through your uh medium profile while you're actually you know talking about this and i see like there is there are a lot of articles where you just you know document to process so as an example one article here what i learned from uh in my first month on quora how to configure uh configuring a subdomain on apache 2 um, yeah. achieving uh loosely cu- coupling with the math expression parser so there are like so many things that where you're just you know um providing informational content and like what 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 i think is actually quite interesting i don't know if you have some data regarding to that but i'm pretty sure like a lot of people actually you know they may google um the issues that um you're actually addressing in your in your um uh, in your content and since uh medium has such a high uh, domain authority like yeah i'm pretty sure that you that you should that you are ranking for a lot of those tiny yeah. uh yeah a, lo- a lot of, of those keywords and, and problems actually when, when i look at the stats most of my articles are making views because of seo because mm-hmm. of uh, google not because of the the medium algorithm and that's also why when you write technical content, you have to be patient. In the first, let's say, five, six months, they are going to, to perform bad. <laughs> this is going to happen. But you have to be, to be patient because uh, if you wrote about something specific, your article is very likely to, to rank uh, uh, in the top three position on Google, and actually most of my articles are in, in top three, and that's why I'm making so much, so many views. Mm-hmm. That, that that that's interesting. So when it comes to actually, uh, you know, your your writing schedule or your writing routine, like how does it look like? I have uh, a notion uh, where I document all the ideas that I have. Let's say that I'm facing a problem. Uh, on my day job uh, and I know th- that this is a problem that other people can have so I add it on, uh, on Notion and then I rank my ideas on, on priority and when I have let's say uh, an hour or two hours I start writing articles it's very very easy actually it's not complex but I mean also sometimes I have to to think about the publication because some publication uh, publish articles uh, from one author, like let's say only one or two articles a month. So sometimes I have to think about that. But um, yeah, it's it's not that difficult. I'm only very well organized with a notion, priority, and then I, I write articles and I deliver it. Excellent. So could you walk us a little bit more behind the um, your organization inside notion and how do you um how do you keep track of everything so i'm pretty sure that you have kind of an idea dump where you're just dumping in let's say yeah. issues that you faced so that you can turn them into articles but how does the 
um, like what does the process look, look like in detail? I have, uh, I'm following a Kanban approach. So I have, let's say that every article starts from an idea and goes to being published. And uh, there's a card for each article and it starts as an idea. Then it becomes like, uh, I wrote uh, an outline and while writing an outline, a very short outline, I have to, to, to make some research, to do some research. And, uh, and so I add to the card a lot of links, usually like, let's say 10 links. Then I go through them and they become usually two, three links that, that I know that I, that I should follow. For example, they are articles about that or about something similar. Mm-hmm. And, and then I start, to, I start to write the article and, and then so it goes from idea to outline to writing. And then I'm, I'm just like waiting for the publication to, to publish it. And sometimes I organize myself so that I submit articles, like let's say, because I, I prefer to, to publish one article a week. Uh, I mean, because publishing, let's say five articles, a week it's not that good in my opinion i prefer to to take my time and to to deliver one article a week so that i can handle it i can promote it i prefer it this way and that's it so idea outline writing written and published excellent and when it comes to um right now like the the monetization part so you mentioned that you have a very simple call to action at the end of your of your articles yeah. uh, which is like hire me and then you are redirecting them to your to your to your website. So, um, how did you actually um, like? What were the first approach that you got? Like, was it more like creating um, like writing content for their blogs? Because I see that you have you know even like being a content writer for like major major players in the in the field. Um, so, yeah. w- w- what like um, first of all like. What kind of requests did you get? So was it more like, well, I want to hire you as a developer? Was it more like, well, like, um, I would like you to be a, a writer on my blog. And, and then like the second question would be like, how did you decide on what kind of pricing or like on your pricing model and like uh, like all the financials behind it? Well, uh, at the beginning, uh, most companies decided to try to hire me as a software engineer. Mm-hmm. And but or or like as a software engineer and technical writer, but um, now it's they usually hire me only as a technical writer because I try to to convey that on on my LinkedIn page, on my Medium page. It's it's like they know all that uh, all those articles, and they think that I'm a technical writer, which which I am, and who I am, and uh, so. Yeah, at the beginning it was like they simply tried to hire me. Now, now they hire me as a as a technical uh, technical writer. And uh, yeah, when it comes to pricing, at the beginning I I had no idea. Also because here in Europe the the job market is very different. And and I mean I had started working like <laughs> not that I mean I have I had very very low experience very little experience so I had no idea at the beginning but I was lucky because most the most famous blogs are like uh, this is what we are going to pay you you cannot say well I want to make this or it doesn't work that way so this helped me to 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 give to had an idea on how much i can um, i can actually charge and now i'm very experienced about that i usually charge on the article and not so like not on words not on uh, not on hours i usually charge on articles on each article like there's some amount of money but um and it depends on on the word but also yeah, it's like on how long the article should be. So I have very different price uh, range, but um, yeah, it's it was difficult at the beginning, very difficult, and and it took me let's say one year to to really start to to 
to charge or what I think it's it's an honest price, it's a right price. And and how did you find this out? Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is <laughs> this is a very good question. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, also I started to 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 meet new other technical uh, riders online. And uh, I connect with them. Uh, I connected with them on uh, on LinkedIn. We started to chat. I started to join Discord groups and to to talk with people, to read other medium articles about that. And so I started to realize to make to do re- research and to to and I was able to 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 understand how much I'm supposed to to charge. But I mean, it's very difficult and also. Uh, I was lucky because many companies, especially American companies, helped me. Uh, like they told me, like yeah, other articles, other uh, technical authors are charging, let's say this, and this helped me to to understand that. But I mean, it was uh, a very long process because at the beginning I was charging like too low, and mm-hmm. then then I was able to to reach what I think a, a good a good level. That that that's great. And how did you actually uh, still keep a foot in um, the actual coding? Because um, you still need to like keep yourself like in the in the trenches, still like practicing, so that you can actually fuel your 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 written content with that. So since um, most people who work with you hire you, hire you as a as a writer, so. Um, do you have, let's say, some some side projects that you are working on, or how do you actually manage that? Yeah, at the beginning, I was scared about that too, because if you think about it as a technical uh, writer, you should like <laughs> have a technical job, or at least you're mm-hmm. supposed to. And and so uh, at the beginning, I was scared about transitioning to software engineering to technical writing. And right now I'm focused like, yeah, I'm writing a lot, but also I always try to to keep the, at least one, two, three clients that uh, ask me to, to code because right now I think it's it's great because it's also a way uh, through this I can uh, I can like uh, think of ideas for no for no articles. So I'm not writing like 100 percent of my time. But um, I'd like to to switch to that, and I think that I I might be like it's very difficult to say, but I might uh, start uh, working for uh, for open source technologies or like or maybe reading more. But um, yeah, I could I could write for for open source technology, and it it would be a way to. To keep myself up to date because of my job, but yeah, I mean, I'm not too scared about that. But uh, yeah, this is a very good question because you need my experience at least. If you want to deliver very good technical content, you 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 must know what you are writing about. <laughs> so you you yes. should have yes. a technical job. Yes. So so it's not just you know writing about writing because like yeah, if you're yeah. just <laughs> writing about writing like it it's quite easy because like you're doing the same thing but you are writing about something else so you yeah. still need to kind of practice and and still be in the you know um, s- still be practicing like what what you're teaching yeah yeah, yeah that's one hundred percent sure and also I may be launching like other projects uh, developed by myself in the future actually i have a few secret projects but i mean <laughs> i don't have a lot of time to to spend on those yes yes that's a that that's very very interesting so uh, antonello what like what would you what would you suggest for people who are listening to this and you know um they are they are like scared maybe to get started or don't know really how to transition from just writing online to actually you know sell their their services first you have to to have like a a basic level of english i mean of course you don't have to be an expert but you have to be able to to write in english and when i say write in english 
I'm talking about simplified English. I don't know if you know that, but it's it's a language. It's like a subset of English, which is uh, designed for non-native speakers. So you can uh, you can learn that. It's not that difficult. It took you, of course, some months. But um, yeah, it's when you have when you are able to write in simplified English, you are able to to start writing good technical content, and and then you you can start on Medium. You can start on Medium. As you, as you told before, Medium has a very good domain authority, so you can start on that. And don't be scared, just write. I mean, most of my friends now are, are, uh, are writing because of their time to follow my, my path and uh, I'm uh, helping them. And also don't be scared to ask more experienced technical writers or writers. They are likely to, to help you. It's a very wholesome community, my experience at least. Uh, so don't be scared. Simply start start writing, and and I, I'm pretty sure that you 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 can achieve great results in a few months. It's not that difficult actually, especially yeah, if you are if you are very consistent. Yes, exactly. So it's all about all about consistency and, and really knowing yeah. that well that that you want to make it and that you're going to yeah, put yeah, yeah. efforts into it. That's one hundred percent sure. You have to be consistent. That's that's the key. You have to be consistent. You have to write at least one article a week. Let's say even more if you if you can. But also you don't have to to be like to start thinking about only the the quantity because at the end of the day your technical content should be uh, able to to address a problem. Should be able to deliver a solution, and so it must have like it must be quality content in a way in a sense Mm -hmm. so yeah you have to find your balance but it's very important to write consistently that's the key for sure awesome it was a pleasure to talk to you Antonello is there anything that you want to add before wrapping up this call yeah uh, actually I have a a publication on Medium for language learners. So if you are a language learner as, as I am, please check it out. It's called Language Hub. And we are also looking for new, new writers. So it's also a good opportunity to, to get started. If Let's, let's say if, if you're studying English, if you want to document your journey, you can do it on, on my publication. Awesome. Thank you very much. And we are going to include all Thanks. the links to your Medium profile, to your personal website, to in the show notes. So thank you very much, Antonel. It's very inspiring actually to, to hear your story. And again, like congrats for the success that you have. And I wish you uh, even, even more success uh, in the future. Thanks, man. It was a pleasure to be here. All right. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode with Antonello Zanini. So he's definitely doing a great job online. So be sure to check out his work. And he's also a perfect example of those quote-unquote underground indie creators who are able to achieve great results for themselves and for their families. So if you want to actually build a business as a content creator, then be sure to check out the first link in the description. It will lead you to my email newsletter. So every day I'm sending out a new email to help you achieve your goals. And well, I can't wait to see you on the flip side. Thank you very much for tuning in today and I see you next week.